Good day and welcome to this week's episode of Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. I am your host, Rhonda Dono, attorney at law, and once again, I'm happy to bring the law on you. Today, we have a very interesting topic, um, speaking about the procedures of buying and selling property in Trinidad and Tobago. Of course, we know it as conveyancing. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of properties being sold. There are a lot of realtors. There are a lot of attorney at law that does, um, that does conveyancing, etc. But we have two special guests in studio today, which are or who are rather, Miss Salis Haynes, a Romani, and also uh, Miss Shade Roberts. And just before I bring them in, I just want to just speak a little bit of, about them. So Miss Salis Haynes, a uh, Romani, she's an attorney at law, an entrepreneur, and a motivational speaker. She practices primarily in the fields of corporate and, and, sorry, and commercial law. Salis held numerous roles in both private and public entities during which she has gained experience in different areas of law, including in the corporate real property, construction, intellectual property, and oil and gas sectors. In 2021, Salis is focused on building her legacy as one of the impact through transparency and transparent conversations that influence meaningful change. We also have Ms. Shade Roberts, real estate broker of Park Place Realty Limited. Shade representing Trinidad and Tobago homeowners and future homeowners. Shade is committed to her clients' needs and utilizes her key negotiation skills to ensure a successful transaction. Raised in Deep South Trinidad, where I'm from, Shade understands the numerous intangible benefits of a life in Trinidad with its unique, unmatched culture and diversity. Now, in the past six years, Shade has become an esteemed realtor, highly regarded by her clients and professionals in the field. Shade showcases her homes on Instagram, TikTok, and all social media platforms, of course. I will put it up on screen at the end of the program. So we have two esteemed guests, as I said. Good morning, ladies. Good, good morning. morning. And Hi. how are you all? Pretty good. good. And thank you for, for joining me on, on Strictly Legal today. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Happy to be here. So Shadi, tell us, um, what is a real estate broker? A real estate broker or agent, basically we arrange the buying and selling of real property. Real property in this case, we mean houses, land, building, industrial buildings and so forth. And um, can you tell your viewers in terms of what is what is um, what what types of let's say transactions that you all preside over? I mean, I know you said sale of buildings. Um, so someone wants to purchase property. What's the first thing they do? They contact a real estate agent, and what happens next? Well, the Trinidad culture is to yes contact a real estate agent and then go look look at properties. But is it actually the wrong thing? Okay. What you need to do is understand how much house you could afford to buy. So this would entail going to the bank first to find out what is your financial status, how much house you can buy. Right, and in terms of, okay, in terms of listing, because I know listing is a big thing, yes. uh, tell us what, what procedure um, that, that, that you do in terms of listing, or what considerations are, are, are taken? To list a property? Yes. Well, f as the, the seller, to list a property, you would first need to at least interview at least three real estate agents, find out if they're FIU registered. You could probably ask for references from attorneys they've worked with in the past, and then choose your agent. Um, after choosing your agent, you would now look through your listing agreement between yourself as a seller and the agent, you'll find out how exactly how long the property would be listed for, as well as how much commission would be paid to the agent after it's sold. And talking about commission, because a lot of times uh, you see pe persons who are selling their property, they are afraid to contact real estate agents because they feel as though real estate agents want to take all their money. <laughs> uh, but what, what do you have to say about, um, about comforting person that sometimes real estate agents actually work in your best interest? Rondell, have you ever heard of this old time term, the funeral goes and more than the dead? Yeah, I know the candle. Okay, the candle. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. so this is the reason why you ought to choose a reputable real estate agent or broker to act on your behalf. Right, yes. Okay, you're not going to pick up a fly by night, you know, the neighbor down the road, you know, he sell a property before, let me just see what he could do because he mightn't take as much commission as, as this one. But it's the absolute wrong thing to do. Um, like I said, you need to do dot your I's, cross your T's before choosing a, a real estate agent. And how are market prices determined? 
by because evaluation. <laughs> right. And we are going to me. I personally encourage all sellers, please do evaluation. Most people make the mistake of over overpricing their properties and they're wondering why it's sitting on the market. But that's, that's most properties in Trinidad, not so. <laughs> Even in a pandemic. <laughs> Actually, you know what, Rondell? During the pandemic, I am happy to see properties now being listed at the correct price it should have been listed yes. before. Yes. We're seeing a decline in, in a reduction in the prices now, and people are buying. People are continuing to buy. The valuations are supporting the auction prices. So we are happy about that. It is reducing. Okay, great, um, and we ho and we hope it's reducing for the better. <laughs> for the better. <laughs> so, so, series coming to the conversation. Yes. Uh, of course, after the real estate agent, um, I mean, the uh, persons or, or rather buyers or sellers, they decide. Okay, let's say the buyer wants this property. Uh, mm -hmm. What's next? I know. You, I mean, there has to be some sort of agreement. So yes, usually that's where the attorney would come in. Um, the person can, of course, choose their own attorney. Once the attorney is contacted, the attorney would act on their behalf and would prepare the, the document that sort of starts off the procedure, which is the agreement for sale. And the agreement for sale would be between the buyer and the seller. Usually it's the seller's attorney at law that would prepare that document and the buyer's attorney would go through it, make sure the terms are acceptable to their clients and also to explain to their clients what the obligations that they're signing on to would be under that document. So we're touching on agreement for sale, of course we will explain. Now, I know sometimes you find that, and, and Shadi, maybe you can answer this, why, why do uh, real estate agents think that, or why do they think they, they need to draft agreement for sales? Um, is that part of a real estate agent function? You know what, to be totally honest with you, when we send, when we send the documents to the attorneys, because of time being time of the essence, of the essence. Yes. The, we know the essence. attorneys are usually busy with their cases and with trials and da, da, da. Hmm. so we tend to kind of help along, help them along yes. the process, yeah. send it to them to vet. Once everything is good, we're, we're clear to sign. But but as as um as Celis indicated, of course, it's an attorney's function, yes. yes. Uh, but you know, it's a standard yes. agreement. Yeah. Yeah. So just walk us through um, what are some of the factors that are to be considered when drafting an agreement for sale. So there would be standard clauses that would determine the party's um, discrete rights. There would be certain things like you put in the amount agreed, you put in all the obligations that the vendor or seller would have to comply with. So for instance, the, the vendor has to have certain documents handed over to the purchaser for them to then complete the next step, the due diligence process. So those would be things like the WASA clearance certificate, land and building taxes, receipts for paying certain things. And of course, it would depend on the type of property. There are different types of properties in Trinidad. Um, so for instance, if you're buying a, a condominium or an apartment, the documents that you would need would be slightly different if you were purchasing a single family dwelling. Um, um, also in the agreement for sale, there would be things like the time for completion, which is a standard 90-day process in Trinidad and in, in most uh, jurisdictions. Yeah. But of course, um, right now things are uh, quite delayed even at um, financial institutions. So one thing that could be considered is if a, a longer period is needed, if the purchaser needs financing for the property. Um, one matter that I dealt with a couple years ago, there was an agreement for sale that had the time for completion, but there was no procedure in the agreement to extend that yes. time. And the, the parties ran into delays. So things like that need to be thought out and need to make themselves into the agreement in the beginning, before when things before. are still good, you yes, know, in, yes, in the yes. in the court and stage, yes. rather than <laughs> when you get to that point where it's too late. Um, also, other things like, for instance, um, I had a case where there was a, a switcheroo. So anything that you see in the property um, that is being sold with the property, for instance, you would need to to make that in the agreement itself, perhaps as a schedule. Um, because as I said, I had a case where there was a bit of a yeah. switcheroo. My client was insisting that there was a, a whirlpool fridge in the property. And then later on, when she acquired the property, there was yes. a different type of fridge. So, <laughs> you know. Shari, is it not a term that they use when you, when real estate agents use when you are um, 
purchasing properties as is or is it or in terms of as is where is where unfurnished is. semi-furnished or fully furnished this needs to be a sale he said this yeah. needs to be in that contract of course and it yeah, contents I, had, uh -huh. I yeah. had a situation where the husband who is it who the, the couple they're the sellers they the husband agreed to sell as is with everything in it yeah fast forward to us in the middle of the transaction after the purchase agreement has been signed the wife she said, I did not agree to that. Mm -hmm. I'm not selling my thing. So it was a whole issue. And that took yeah. six months to close. Yeah. And then we also have to look at title. Now, mm -hmm. explain yeah. to us in terms, of, in terms of searches. Right. Uh, that is, uh, in, in my mind, that is one of a requirement. Of course. And usually that is one of the sub processes that starts once you've signed the agreement for sale. Um, somehow people like to sell things that aren't there sometimes. <laughs> so it's important. So when, when somebody is selling their property, they're representing to you as a purchaser that it is theirs, that they have the right to sell it and that they can negotiate. But unfortunately, sometimes that isn't accurate. So when you're going through the procedure, it's important to do a title search to establish who is the actual legal owner of the property, as that is the only person who would have the, the right to tr sell and then transfer, convey the property to a purchaser. Six, and yes. usually when you're doing a title search, what the class would look for is a root of title that goes back 20 years. 20 years, of course. Yes. And of course, let's stick a pin. We will be right, be right back when you are watching Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. And we're back. Welcome to Strictly Legal once again. We are with Shadi Roberts and Celis Haynes Romani. So before the break, we were speaking about uh, searches. Yes. And I, I did mention, I said I would ask Shadi this question. Now, what, what uh, do real estate agents do to ensure that persons that are listing properties own this said property, as they say? Rondell, gosh. <laughs> you know what? Uh, with experience, sometimes you might ask certain questions to the so-called seller. They may not be able to answer the question appropriately. You know, you have your little spidey, your spidey senses. Your spidey senses will tell you that, listen, something's off. As a real estate agent, you're supposed to be networking with attorneys who could then we can do our searches on our own to yeah. make sure that, okay, everything is fine with this property. If you're not sure of a course of action, do not attempt it. Send it to the professionals who can do the searches to make sure. Like yeah. Celis. Yes, and of course, yeah. as you said, the title search, um, the, Clark. the search clerks rather, yes. they would ensure a proper route of title. I know you said 20 yeah. years, but some people go back to as far as 30 well, or 40 it's a years. a minimum of 20 years. A minimum, years. Yeah. of course. Yeah. And what are the considerations in terms of, um, what, are the, what are some of the, uh, the sellers, or sorry, the buyer's obligations? So, well, the number one, of course, is to pay yes. <laughs> as accordance with, in accordance with the agreement. And usually there is 10% that is paid to the seller as a deposit or a good faith that they will continue with the transaction. And then the 90% that remains is paid on completion. The buyer, um, just for their own procedures and, and to do their own due diligence, they go to the relevant professionals to start the process on their end. Um, most of the times they would just go to an attorney and the attorney would then take over on their behalf and make the linkages with the other professionals. One thing, I've been in, involved in property sales in the UK and in the US as well, and I realized that in those markets they do a lot more in terms of confirming like structural integrity sometimes and inspections, and that's not really something that caught on here yet. Because I, I really, think a lot of people are so so anxious to sell yes, property that yeah. they don't look at and the varying expenses, factors. Each yes. of these things has a cost too. Especially too, I mean, I, I mean, no, um, there's not an indictment on insurance agents, but sometimes insurance agents are so quick to close mm. that, <laughs> that, you know, uh, it, it's important to follow procedure yeah. uh, so that when property is sold and when conveyance occurs, then there won't be any problems to Going do any forward. rectification or, or yes. breach or, or whatever the case is. Yes, yeah, certainly. Right, so, so let's also touch on uh, 
after paying uh, your fees mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the consideration to sell, yes. uh, what are some of the other fees that uh, uh, a buyer will incur? So there's legal fees. If they're going through a financial institution for a mortgage as well, they would have to pay the financial institution fees. Sometimes there's a closing fee for the, the mortgage as well as all the interest that you pay. Um, then the financial institution would be going through the due diligence process. So they would also send out searches. All of those things need to be paid for. Um, just as you mentioned, there's insurance as well. Um, there's also stamp the duty. stamp duty, stamp duty yeah. the attorney's fees for the financial institution for closing the mortgage that's separate from the conveyance. So, well, as you can tell, that there's a, I, a whole long list. I'm, I'm please explain to the public that fees are based on statute. Correct. So, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So, for instance, uh, the fees for an attorney to prepare the first document, the agreement for sale, um, that's not necessarily prescribed, but the conveyance and the mortgage, both of those are, are prescribed in statute and set in statute in non-contentious business rules, which are available online. Online, and, of course. Yes. Um, and that's why I always tell clients, if you are in doubt, up, yes. you just look it up and do your Correct. calculations. Absolutely. No, no, no. Tell me, Shadi, are there instances where uh, one signs an agreement for sale and then you pay your ten percent or whatever, and then yes. the, the seller decide they don't want to sell the property again, or the buyer decide yes. they don't want the property? Uh, what sort of penalties that the real estate, from a real estate point of view um, are incurred? <laughs> okay, for the buyer, if you choose to change your mind for whatever reason, you don't want to sell, um, you would still have to pay your commission, the commission to the agent, and you would have to hand over that 10, 10 or 5%, whatever the deposit was, back to the prospective, well, the purchaser. The purchaser, yeah. Who is no longer the purchaser. Yeah. <laughs> right? So you lose that. And from the purchaser's um, standpoint, usually it's because they did not do their due diligence by getting their, their financials in order. Yeah. So their mortgage was not approved and they jumped the gun and paid their deposit. deposit. You are going to lose your deposit. And, and, and this is a, a, a reoccurring problem. And you said from the beginning that you have to ensure that you're qualified for your mortgage first if you're not first. paying cash exactly. before actually it being interested in signing agreements. Because exactly. we've seen a lot of times where persons would, as you said, pay deposits and then boom, banks reject and them. Also, not just that, but we were speaking about all the fees earlier. Yes. A lot of people don't understand how they, much how much this fees? costs, apart from the purchase of the property itself, how much Correct. goes on top. Stamp duty can be a very expensive bill, yes. especially for, for residential mortgages. There are a lot of incentives. So for instance, right now, if you're purchasing your first property, you're exempt um, up to two million for stamp duty. But outside of that, especially if you're buying land, stamp duty can be a hefty Yes. Amount. So it it yeah. could be three figures, um, sorry, six figures, it could be nine figures, you know, it can go up from there. Now, of course, tell us what, um, of course, there are exemptions in terms of paying yes. stamp duty. So yes. explain to the public in terms of what exemptions are there. Uh, so, from paying stamp duty. So as we, as I mentioned before, there would be exemptions for first-time homeowners. All residential properties have exemptions up to eight hundred and fifty thousand. And then, if you are a first-time homeowner, you get additional exemptions up to two million. So if this is your first property that you're buying ever, um, you have to do a statutory declaration and apply to the Inland Revenue Department uh, Division for an exemption. But you will be exempted up to two million, and that's been increased twice in, in recent yes. years. So clearly there's that thrust and, and that interest and initiative to encourage first time home ownership. And in terms of land, uh, the exemption yes. is, is up to four fifty. Four fifty, four hundred and fifty thousand right? dollars. And yes. there are no exemptions for agricultural land. Well when you purchase agricultural land, you, you think, don't pay exemption. No. You have to pay stamp duty, I think. Yeah. Uh, which is like two percent on, on the first three fifty. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Right. Of course we have to take another break. We'll be right back. You're watching WES and content capital is strictly legal.
and welcome back to Strictly Legal. We are speaking about the procedures of selling and buying property in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, so we are speaking about stamp duty prior, Salis. Yes. Uh, now tell us, can foreigners purchase property in Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah, there are certain restrictions, um, especially for foreigners purchasing land in Tobago um, due to government policy that was uh, discussed and enacted a couple of years ago. But of course, as you will know, there are ways around all things Indeed. and there, is also, there are also provisions in place for foreigners to get licenses so that they can own a certain amount of property. So there, there are ways to be able to effect that. No. Uh, explain as well in terms of when persons buying property, sometimes they feel as though they own land mm -hmm. or sometimes it's fee simple as mm -hmm. well as it's license or lease. So explain yeah. the difference between when persons purchasing property in terms of the fee simple or lease. So fee simple or freehold ownership is sort of the, the best type of title that you can get as a private landowner. That means that you own the property absolutely, however, subject to the laws of the land. So yes, the government can tell you how high to build your fence on your property that you've mm -hmm. paid for, that kind of thing, versus a lease or a leasehold term, which is a term of years. So a lot of persons right now, townhouses are in for whatever reason, and those would be sold on, on leases of most times 199 year terms. Is that something, um, um, Shade, that real estate agents um, explain to these um, prospective purchasers when they're purchasing property? That is something all real, real estate agents should, should explain. Yes. A lot of them don't know, but that's something <laughs> we should explain in its entirety. Particularly uh, when, when you sell persons or, or you pitch land to persons or property mm -hmm. and then when they're about to sign the agreement, the attorney says, well, you know, you explain this is leasehold, yes. you know, and it means that you do not own the land, mm -hmm. all you own is the house, an interest, yeah, interest. interest right, so even when you are sold or selling the property, you have to, I mean, it's, it's based, the value is based on the property itself, mm -hmm. um, the house that is or, or whatever building they own. Yes. Um, now, in terms of leasehold, um, property. Let's say the state owns leasehold property. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of if someone wants to sell those properties, what sort of procedures must um, um, must they take? You're saying that the so a private person yeah, a private sell person state yes property. state property or let's say HGC property. Okay. Um, of course, so, you know it's leasehold. Yes. So if they have an interest in the property, and most times. Well, well I, I'm assuming your question is for bona fide persons. Yes, bona fide persons, right. of course. Okay, so persons who would have like a deed of lease, for instance, they would need to first check their lease because in most cases there would be a clause there that says what you can do and when. So for instance, in those type of properties, they might say you can't sell the property for five years, five years or in yeah. some cases, 10, ten. years. Ten. So you have to check your, your, your lease and see where your rights and obligations are at and then you can move forward in those circumstances. And are there any um, consents that must be sought? Yes. So once you have leasehold property, and again, that, that would be back in the agreement, but in most cases, I could say 99% sure, there would be a clause that says that you can't just sell the property just like that. You'd need to have consent from the owner, the person who owns the freehold, and then once they have no objection to it and you have a written consent, you could go ahead and, and sell to another person or third party. Is it customary, let's say for instance, the Housing Development Corporation, is it customary for them to um, reject um, or not consent to um, a conveyance? They, they can't, they have the power to, and they, 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 I've certainly seen instances where they have, but it would be more in circumstances where, for instance, there's somebody who is being sold a property that has significant debts, and then the concern would be, what if this property gets tied up in this person's assets that, that aren't, the person isn't, isn't cash fluid. So those would be some of the instances. Also, where the original beneficiary, um, who would be the, the owner, the lessee, they have extended the property or created something dangerous on the property or, or done things like alterations without the freehold owner's consent or without getting the statutory approvals, like for instance from the Town and Country Planning Division. Yes, a Those, lot of persons build yes. without the statutory approvals and then Correct. they want us to make magic. Yeah. Yes, 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 <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and I don't have any wand. <laughs> <laughs> now, Shani, tell us, I mean, I know you are the principal owner, director of Park Place Realty, so tell us more about Park Place Realty. 
Well, Park Place Realty Rondell has been in existence for the past six and a half years, um, headed by myself and eight agents. So we basically, I, I coined my business as selling real estate the millennial way because the millennials are buying now. I know who my target market is. Um, I love social media, love, love, love social media. So I display my properties for sale. I market my properties for sale and rent in the most fun way um, and professional way. You would see my photography being very, very professional. I advertise on on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, TikTok which is my yes. favorite. <laughs> which is my favorite. The millennial background. Um, and tell us, where, where are you located? I am located at 87 to 89 Frederick Street, Port of Spain, just three buildings down from the Law Association. Right, okay, yes, the Law Association, <laughs> of course. And, and say least, um, I know you are an entrepreneur, so tell us yes. more about this entrepreneurial um, uh, drive or, or spirit. Okay, so I um, have a law chambers, Titan Chambers, where I work with other attorneys. We're all self-employed, but we operate under the same umbrella, and I've been running Titan Chambers for about three years now. My aim has always been in starting up a legal business to just get to where people are at, and I've always felt that there's been this large unserved or underserved market for persons looking for legal services. So my aim has been to carve out a niche in that. And I also have a couple of other businesses that I run or work with. Um, one of them is the Shiro Foundation. So we yes. support women who want to get into business with, with services and making networking connections. All right, great. And I, I've, I've also seen that you have done a lot of motivational speak, um, speak features, yes. features, especially on Twitter spaces and all those yes. spaces that are out now. Yes. Um, of course, you, you deal with conveyancing as well. Correct, I do. Right. Um, okay. And any last um, words that you want to say to the audience because we are we are out of time? Sure. Just <laughs> a couple of things. First of all, it, it's yes, buying a property is expensive, but it's important to make the investment if you're serious to get the right professionals on your team working for you to help you through the process. And it always makes sense to have persons, even if they're not professionals, but persons who can support you, like friends and family members who've been through it, to just kind of get, it, it can be quite complicated so sometimes a bit of hand holding or just somebody who knows what's happening makes makes the difference and it's okay to trust attorneys yes <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's okay to trust, trust real estate, real estate agents, agents too uh, yes, Shani, we tell are us not your, your enemies <laughs> precisely tell us your closing um, statements in your real estate <laughs> agent is not your enemy okay <laughs> we are not going to oversell so we can make money you as a purchaser you do not pay me the seller pays me, so no one is trying to steal your money away from you. Trust the real estate agent. We, you need someone in your corner to hold your hand. Yes, and trust the process because at the end of the day, it takes it takes um a it while. takes all parties and it takes a yes. while. Yes. And of course, with the I know the introduction of the um the the act that would govern yes. um the, the yeah, real estate Absolutely. agents, it yeah. will sort of put things into perspective and ensure mm -hmm. that their accountability. Yep. Right. right. And like the, the FIU registration. Yes. Yes. Like yes. The insurance runs for precisely yeah, yeah. Yeah, because everyone in this country now uh, sell property <laughs> yeah. but of yeah. course right so that's a wrap thank you so much ladies thank you for gracing the strictly legal set and Absolutely. all the best in your endeavors thank, thank you and you thank you so much guys thank you for watching uh strictly legal on wesn content capital i am your host ronda donor see you next time god bless